Hello makers and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris and I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week, so smash that subscribe button down below if you want to learn more. This week I thought I would share with you a self-drafted embroidered linen dress that I made. I did a simple sweetheart neckline for the top and a pleated skirt for the bottom. So let's get to that tutorial. So making the bodice of this dress. So I have some pre-embroidered linen fabric that I'm going to be using. I just placed the pattern print on the front of the dress and on the lining piece, I have none of the embroidery on there. So we're going to start off with doing some darts in here. And I decided to do a princess seamed bodice with that higher neckline, um, sweetheart neckline. And so I'm putting some French darts in the side here just to give the bust a little bit of shape, even though when you have a princess cut, bodice you don't necessarily need to have those darts I just wanted that look in this dress and as I always do my darts I am just tying off the end so never backstitch at the end of the dart it'll create too much bulk just tie it off with a couple of knots and you are good to go and next on the bodice here I am just going to press those darts and I'm pressing them around here I'm just using a decent amount of steam to get them to lie nice and flat. And then the same for the lining piece as well. And you're going to want to push the darts in opposite directions when you are pressing them. And next I have the straps and I just took, I believe about one and a half or two inch sections for my straps and I'm just pinning these and then I'm taking them over to the serger and serging the end and then a quick trick on how to turn that out is by taking a safety pin and just pushing it through the tube it is so much faster than those other turning tools I find that sometimes they slip and it's just my go-to and hey it's free because who doesn't have a safety pin in their sewing box Next, I'm going to attach the straps to the front of the bodice, and I'm just going to tack that on with the machine. And then next, I am going to attach the back pieces of the bodice that I had put together here. And I'm just going to attach that along the side seams and pin that in place going all the way down here. And this is just a very simple bodice that I put together. And if you'd like a tutorial on how I did that, either draping on the dress form or creating it uh, digitally in Adobe Illustrator or on paper with a pen and paper, let me know. I'm happy to do that so that you can make one in your size as well. Or if you like, I can share the one that I've already made since I made mine in Illustrator. I like to put everything into a digital pattern so I have a file inventory of everything. Just let me know and I can uh, create a downloadable link for you to grab this pattern. And next I'm just attaching the lining and so the lining goes on um, with the straps sandwiched in between and we are just going to pin along the top side of the bodice. So we're not actually going to do the back seam where our zipper is going to go or the bottom seam where our dress is going to attach to the bodice. So it's going to look something like this with those sides open. We're gonna pop over to the sewing machine, get that stitched and surged. And then the next thing that we are going to do is with that sweetheart neckline, you've got a little bit of a dip that comes in it. So you want to make sure that you clip right to the edge of that stitching. So it gives it a bit of movement so that you're able to turn it and it's nice and crisp and doesn't pucker on you. So I'm just going to flip this right side out. And then I'm gonna pop it over to the iron and give it a nice good press. 
because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do some understitching. So we're going to understitch on the lining side of the fabric. So I want to make sure that the lining side is the side I'm stitching on and that the seam allowances are pressed towards that lining side. And then I'm going to stitch as far as I can until I can't anymore because we do have those straps I'm gonna back stitch and then we're just going to continue doing the same thing along the top of the bodice along the entire sides here just tacking everything down do not skip this step it really helps your garments to lay the way that you want them to lay and to keep the seams pressed nicely and so once that is all done I'll show you what that looks like when it's all finished so when I open it up here, you are going to see that I have the seams stitched. So you can see that it's stitched from the edge to the top. I skipped over where the strap is. Same right here where we went and just skipping the strap here because we can't stitch up through there to get our understitching done there. Next, onto the skirt. So the next thing that I'm going to do is about three inches down from the waist, I'm going to make a mark. That's where I like to have my pockets, but you can place them wherever you'd like. And then I'm going to place my pocket pieces on right sides together on both ends of my skirt piece. And the way I drafted my skirt piece is I did it double the size of my waist in the bodice. So before you put the zipper in or if there's any seam allowances, so it's a little bit bigger than double the waist seam and I'm just going to attach this. I have a front and a back piece of the skirt and I happen to use the embroidered edge on the fabric as my bottom so I don't actually have to create a hem. So next we're just going to pin this together. I'm going to pin all around the pocket in place going down the side seams right to the edge and then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch it and then pop it on over to the serger and get those seams surged. You're going to want to do that on the front and the back and you can see you've got an opening for your pocket invisible inseam pockets which i absolutely love on dresses and next i am just measuring how big my bodice top is and this is without the zipper in and it's about 28 and a half um, inches here and I'm just marking the center of my bodice so that I can place the center of my skirt right there. And I'm going to attach this with about three pins because I don't want this center point to move. And so this is how I'm going to do my box pleats. Now I want my side seams to match up on my bodice as well as my skirt. You never want to put any pleats along the side because what it's going to do is it's going to create a fullness on your hips that just doesn't look desirable. It, it'll make you look a little too puffy and bigger in places you don't want to be bigger. And next I am creating this box pleat. So I'm creating that center and then I'm placing a pin along the center on both sides. And then I am distributing the fabric flat so that we can get that down. And then we can just stitch right along it. And then I'm going to fill that up with pins. And then I'm going to do the next box pleat in the center. So I've got two box pleats in the front and two in the back. That way we will have four box pleats in total evenly distributed along the bodice of your dress and what I find is that it is a lot more flattering to have these box pleats it creates a beautiful fullness in the skirt but as opposed to putting in gathers in the skirt which in my personal opinion find that gathers creates a lot of bulk at the waist and it also seems a little more childish this feels a little bit more elegant so once I've got that in place and I've stitched it, surged it to uh, secure the ends, then we've got our evenly distributed box pleats that are nice and large and look so beautiful. Now on to the invisible zip. So with this, we're gonna install the invisible zipper just the same that you would normally. If you need a quick refresher on how to properly install an invisible zipper with a lot more detail than I'm going to give you in this video, I will leave a card up here as well as a link in the description down below. Go check that out. It'll give you some tips and tricks on installing a perfect invisible zip every single time. So once we've got that pinned in place, we are going to switch to our invisible zipper foot and put that in make sure our needle is in the right side here 
pop that zipper foot down and stitch our zipper on. And we're going to stitch both sides on our zipper. And just make sure that you don't get your zipper twisted or anything. Goodness knows that's happened to me more times than I can count because you're going fast. It's the end of the project. You want to get things done. And then you install the zipper and you go to zip it up and you realize you've actually twisted the zipper upside down. It, it, it's ridiculous. But anyways, once that's done, we are going to then place our regular zipper foot or our regular foot back on. And then we're just going to start up at the top of the zipper foot. And then we're going to continue that back seam in the back of the dress right down to the end. And now your dress is pretty much complete. You've just got one final finishing touch to do. And that is to get out your needle and thread and hand sew that lining to the inside seam on the dress so everything is exactly seamless and utterly perfect and ready for your next occasion. And there you have it on making a linen dress with some pockets on the inside. If you'd like to know how I draped the pattern on my dress form, just leave me a comment in the comments down below and I'd be happy to do a video on that. Until next time makers, let's get our sew-spiration on! Bum, bum, bum.